comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. If you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it. If you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about, it's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. First comment comes from A A A A hyphen BK7KQ, and they say, thank you, Colin Jason, for the lesson. Now that I think of it, there is indeed no proof in a negative. How does one proof a negative? Something that does not exist cannot be proven. But I wonder, if something does not exist, is that in itself proof for the non-existence? For example, Everyone knows giraffes don't have wings. We can prove the wings to do the wings do not exist on the giraffe by simply take a descent look at the animal, therefore pro proving the negative state of the wings being non existence. I think AAAA is perhaps missing the point that I'm making in the context of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar in that what is the point i use the analogy again if i'm going to ask a a a a hyphen b k 7 k q to go to the grocery store for me am i going to give them a list of all the things i don't want or all of the things i do want it's like why are we having this conversation well my best guess is that this individual, whomever they are, is wrestling with the fiction system programming that we've all been subjected to throughout our schooling, through the educational systems, having to do with negative conditions of state, thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that, don't do this because I said so, it's all negative condition of state, it's very challenging to be successful in dealing with those challenges and bring it to a positive performance. What purpose could you possibly have for proving that a giraffe does not have wings? Or how about you, AAAA, proving that uh, I don't have three arms? I mean, this is, it's sort of getting into, for me, a frivolous and nonsensical, fictitious condition of state of psychology here. Let's bring it back to the practical matters of what actually matters, and that's proving positives. Then I wonder about a second thing. If something is being called non-existent, it is non-existent. It is in a state of non-existence. So both positive and negative are irrelevant. In both cases, it is if we speak about if something is, therefore we speak of it being existent. A negative cannot be produced. If one would destroy something, one would only bring the destroyed item into a different state of being. Modify would be the term regarding correct sentence structure. Um... No, that, that is not entirely true. That, that is not true. If one would destroy something, then one only brings the destroyed item into a different state of being. If something ceases to exist, it's no longer on the geometric level playing field. It's no longer considered. It very, very well may be in a different condition of state, but it's not 
pertinent to what we're doing. So it doesn't need to be considered. It's off the table. So I'm not sure where you're going with this. We say it if we say it is non-existent, we say it exists and we are producing a negative, which is incorrect. If we say it is non-existent, we say it exists. No, that is not true. If you say it is non-existent, it's non-existent. If you say it exists, it's ex it exists. That's two different things. I'm not sure where you're going with this. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't quite know what you're saying here. And I will say this, A, 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 hyphen B, K, 7, K, Q. I do appreciate these comments. However, we are... We're going into a domain of mitigation. And as I've said multiple times, the comments field on a YouTube channel is not the place to get closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. If you, AAAA, are serious about learning this grammar, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. Get serious about it. Put your best foot forward. Because as it stands, you know, these do provide material for these comment videos, but it just feels like I'm going in circles here because I've explained it at least two or three different times. And um, it appears as though you, apparently, and this is just a guess on my part, are still stuck in the fiction uh, mindset. So the best way that I know of for you to extricate yourself from that mindset is to actually learn the grammar and uh, do a workshop. Uh, but that's my humble suggestion. Thank you. Next comment comes from Joshua Hardaway, and they say, I want to learn this. Found your channel from TJ. Thanks. And they're actually commenting on one of, the, one of my earlier videos on uh, the Prefix Pro. So thank you, Joshua, for finding my channel and for your viewership. And I also have to thank TJ, who has a website called You Are Law, which I've done, I think, at least one, maybe two audits or reaction videos to uh, that website. Interesting little history there. I don't know what it looks like nowadays, but two years ago, that TJ guy on his You Are Law website would post my videos behind a paywall on his channel for teaching syntax, which if you're looking at the You Are Law website, what they talk about or refer to as being syntax, is not syntax, it's parse. So just be aware of that. Thank you, Joshua, and welcome. Next comment comes from user hyphen OD4LJ8NX5Y, and they say, Oh, wow. Right off the bat, they have a tilde one not been positioned with a position lodial phrase. Again, the old number scenario is a number of fact. If the answer is yes, then it has to be positioned as a fact with the position lodial phrase in front of it. If it's not a number, I mean, if it's not a fact, well then, you wouldn't uh, be using position lodial phrases, would you? Which means this is not correct sentence structure based upon that one little mistake. For the claimant's knowledge of the fact is with the claim of the sun's great heat. What is great? I wonder what the finite mean of that is. With the emission, okay, we have particle of negation, vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, of the near noon day, what in the heck is near? Just like great, what is near? What's the correct sentence structure finite mean for that? With the heat hyphen sensation by the claimant. Now, looking at it objectively, the positional sequencing is wonderful. For, of, verb, with, of, with, of, with, by. Perfect positional sequencing. However, the facts need a lot of work. And again, please take into consideration you have not positioned your numbers as facts. So therefore, that throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, babble. 
I can't really tell if there's a double space between the one and the four here. So let's just say that there's a single space here. So if you were to actually syntax this, the one here would be an adjective. The F-O-R would be a pronoun. The would be an adverb. Claimant's knowledge would be an adjective. Of would be a pronoun. The would be an adverb. So on and so forth on down the line. So this is not correct sentence structure based upon that error right there. And then uh, the second one is for the claimant's knowledge of the fact is with the claim of the near noonday great heat. Oh my goodness gracious. With the heat emission of the sun with the heat sensation by the claimant. And then there's no full stop at the end there. Again, the positional sequencing is wonderful, user, whoever you are, but the facts need a ton of work. A for effort. I'm sorry, E for effort. Next comment comes from someone named Sovereign-Man, which, that's an interesting name. I don't know any man who is a sovereign in the classic sense of the term, but hey. Anybody can choose a YouTube username, a nom de guerre. They say margins, of course, always the margins. And then I say, always the margins, please elucidate as to what you're talking about. And then they say, the margins are not part of the document, yet they sign in the margins. And they're talking about a, um, a screenshot that I posted in my community section of a page out of a private Masonic textbook that I came across. And you can look that up in my community section if you want to see the, the screenshot. The margins are not part of the document. Where did you get that from? Please cite your source. And then they say the Chicago Manual Style 16th edition. And then I say a page, a screenshot. Bro, continue to the evidence, please. I'm pretty sure margins within a document are part of a document unless they are part of a separate box or you cite the Chicago Styles annual style as the styles authority of your document. So what I'm saying here is that anything that's on a document, I don't have a document here in front of me, but anything that's on that face of that document, whether it's in the margins or in the text or whatever it is, anything that's within those buoys, are part of the document. Now, if it's in a separate box, that's different. But this is what I'm saying, as far as correct sentence structure goes, I'm speaking from correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And as we go on here, you're gonna see that sovereign man has little to no correct sentence structure knowledge. And so that's why they're responding the way they're responding. They said, I reference them because man's law is created using authority. Thus, it is impossible to cite anything without it being an authority. Did you hear that, folks? Sovereign man said, I reference them because man's law is created using authority. Thus, it is impossible to cite anything without it being an authority. Let that sink in for a second. And then they say the margins are the area between the end of the physical document and the beginning of the written word, which is a box. So they're saying that margins are a box. But with correct sentence structure, it's one word, one meaning. Margins are margins. Boxes are boxes. You see what I'm saying? Margins are margins. Boxes are boxes. Something written outside of the written word box is either in the margins or not in the physical document outside the four corners. Four corners are four corners. Margins are not four corners. The four corners of the document are the actual four corners of the document. And if you put a box inside that document, now you have another four corners. And those are two separate things. Margins are imaginary assumptive borders. If you want to pull it, put it in that context, if you want to put it in, you know, articulate it in that way, but the margins are indeed part of that document. And then they say the margins are for a reference like a page number. 
not part of the document. It wouldn't make sense for a random number to be there. It's for a living man to see it. Well, I'm sure a dead man probably couldn't see it, so I'm not sure what you mean there. I mean, I agree, you know, dead dead people, I don't think there's any evidence that dead people or dead men can see things. So, yes, you would have to be living in order to see that. Um, page numbers are part of the document. And if a page number is in a margin, it is part of the document. Again, I digress. AVO36 says, agree marginal text, although here it points to uppercase being agreed upon oath, decree of completion, bow, bow, whatever. By the way, dude still believes he lives on a spinning globe, dot, dot, dot. I don't know what the, any of that has to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, AVO36, but thanks for chiming in. Ooh, all right, so I get a chance to give some coolie on it now, and I said, I see. In your world, your concept of authority is based upon a presumption and a false premise. The world of correct sentence structure is quite a bit different. And I'm referring to this, when he says, I reference them because man's law is created using authority, thus it is impossible to cite anything without it being an authority. And then I said, I see in your world, your concept of authority is based upon a presumption and a false premise. A box is a box. The written word is the written word. Boxes are not assumed to exist. There are clear parameters not assumed or, nor imagined. And then they say, I'm not talking about authority. I'm talking about the appeal to authority fallacy, which is citing something else as evidence without providing facts. Example, citing the Bible. Bible is not authority, but just a reference that is being cited to. You see what they did there? That's the logical fallacy known as moving the goalposts. They said, I'm not talking about authority. I'm talking about appeal, the appeal to authority fallacy. I reference them because man's law is created using authority. They don't mention anything about a logical fallacy here. But when they're called out on it, now all of a sudden they change their story. Oh, no, they weren't talking about authority, authority. They're talking about the logical fallacy appeal to authority. That's called moving the goalposts. This is a perfect illustration of that, of someone being caught out and now having to change their story to suit whatever it is their agenda is here. I cannot talk about man's law, UCC contract law, without using the fallacy. I mean, that's your personal choice, I guess. I'm mostly talking about the insanity of these documents, glossary of the dog Latin, all caps, underlining the mass amount of different styles. Okay, they're using the word dog Latin, I mean the terminology dog Latin, all caps. So that tells me they, they probably are familiar with the Romley Stewart School of Adverb, Verb, Adjective, Pronoun, Fiction, Babble, Bullshit. Which, I mean, works, I mean, it goes hand in hand with having a username such as Sovereign Man. But it definitely has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Then I say, you literally said, I reference them because man's law is created using authority, thus it is impossible to cite anything without being without it being an authority. You did not mention the word fallacy, therefore you yourself are engaging in the logical fallacy of moving the goalposts. Modifying your claims as you go rather than stand on them and hold a position. The insanity you reference must only be your perception of them as I don't see them as such. Correct sentence structure has enabled me to see the grammar for what it is and I offer these things as incentives to perhaps inspire people such as yourself, sovereign man, to actually study and learn correct sentence structure so that these things don't seem so insane anymore. And then with that last comment... The sovereign man went silent. Next comment comes from AVO36 again. And this, this is on the same one, the, that screenshot from the Masonic text. And they say, turn card right way up, turn once to right, blah, blah, silent hand sign with read one line name. If required, greeting and name are italics. Keep it simple. And then a basketball and a monkey. 
And then they say, neen, 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 my world, sea water spins, yah. And then I say, thanks for the comment, Avo, whomever you are. What card are you referring to? Oh, hold on. They must have deleted a comment. They, they left another comment talking about Satan. They mentioned the word Satan, and then I say, by the way, what is a Satan? And then they say, name the styles manual that produced the document. And then I said, that's what I thought. Have fun in fantasy land, AVO36. Come back when you have the courage to use your full correct name and take responsibility for your words rather than hide behind a nom de guerre. So they must have deleted some of their comments there. Obviously. <laughs> Styles manuals do not produce documents. Perhaps you ought to first begin a study of plain, simple English usage before trying to comment on a quantum grammar channel. Oh, that's in re response to the name the styles manual that produced the document. Yeah, it's true. Styles manuals do not produce documents. Uh, men and women produce documents. Sovereign Man then chimes in and says, those seem like ad hominem uh, attacks, are they? And then I said, seem like a comprehensive study of logic would enable you to answer your own question unless you'd like me to spoon feed it to you as well. So now I'm beginning to see a connection between this sovereign man and this AVO individual. They could possibly, quite possibly be the same account because they seem to be ping-ponging back and forth here. And by the way, to answer this question, I don't ad hominem attack anyone, not normally. What I do is I criticize what people say. But people are so intrinsically, apparently connected emotionally to their beliefs, they take it as though I am attacking them. But I'm not attacking them. I'm criticizing what they're claiming. An ad hominem attack would mean if I said something like, um, Silver Man says, those seem like ad hominem attacks, are, you? are they? And then I would say to them, Silver Man, why are you even commenting on here? You weigh over 400 pounds. Only people who weigh less than 300 pounds are allowed on here. In other words, fat people don't need to comment. That's an ad hominem attack. When you attack someone personally, that is what an ad hominem attack is. Okay? But again, I said if you would study logic, then sovereign man would know these things. Sovereign Man says, I cannot answer my own question without you answering it. I'm asking the question. Actually, you can. I mean, if you possess the, the wherewithal the, and the intelligence to research and to study and to put the blood, sweat, and tears in, you actually can answer just about any question that you have. At least I found that for myself. Sovereign Man may be different. Perhaps they have learning disability. I don't know. I don't want to assume those types of things. But for the most part, normal, um, what we would call normal people of standard intelligence, which I like to think of myself as, you know, I'm not nothing extra special about me as far as intelligence goes, you know, uh, smarts and things like that. If you have an average amount of intelligence, such as I like to consider myself as possessing, then you can answer just about any question you have. You don't need to ask other people. You can find out yourself unless you're lazy and you don't want to and you want to be spoon fed. I have directed you towards a path where you may choose to educate yourself and put the work in to learn something. If you use the word cannot, that's your choice. And your choice is to have me spoon feed you an answer that is readily available to one who is willing to study. And I choose not to spoon feed. If you are not here to learn correct sentence structure, then why are you here? To troll or mitigate? As a guest aboard my vessel, it is contingent upon you to read the terms and conditions of the comments field. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, my goodness. See, here we go again. Individuals like this, it always ends up like this. They come here with an agenda, and then I end up sussing them out. And this is the type of troll that I get the most often. Duh, yet, uh, perhaps there's an elongated skull under that hat. Mr. Glass, why are you losing so much sleep over meaningless documents? Stop overthinking it. Hand signed blue ink gets it yet. 
And then I say, sigh. Another one of these folks who don't read or respect the terms and conditions of the vessel they are a guest of. No knowledge of correct sentence structure, yet they feel they can tell others what to do. Let me guess. You're from the good old USA. Too bad you're walking the plank, Mr. Anonymous. Bye. And that's that. So now it's my best guess that AVO36 and Sovereign Man are probably either friends or one and the same individual, but we'll never know because they do not have the guts to credential themselves. Thank you for the entertainment, uh, fellas or women. Maybe you're women. Thank you for the entertainment, girls. Girls or guys. I don't want to offend anybody, so I don't want to get all, you know, on that whole gender thing. Next comment comes from Dennis Thompson, and they say, Hello, Jason Matthew Glass. Why do people have so much trouble spelling my name correctly? Is it too much to ask that someone get your name correct? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. But I digress. Let's go easy here. From Dennis Michael Thompson. Really like your subject's content. Your ownership style about history. Be it cannot be fact, as so many minds at play with it, is nice to see. From my mind and heart, heart not belief, they are different. Ten thousands, gods, many walking the streets, sat night, lull in their minds. Hundreds God, e.g. God, kings, queens, man, and other type like Janus, 11 God, of doorways equals elites God. But creator is highest. Went to question many religions, churches, past year, zero, their leadership only used Lord, Lord, God, etc. I questioned them all, say why not use word creator. Many cannot answer me. Two stated their doctrine. Lol. I walked away so sad in heart. Please keep up your good work. Keep it real. Dennis Michael Thompson. P.S. Image saying in God we trust, meaning in King Charles we trust. Lol. Well, to be quite honest there, Dennis, I really don't know what you're saying there. I'm not... Uh, it's very confusing to me. So I guess what I would ta say is, um, you know, sadness is a normal condition of state for humans, just like happiness is. And uh, one thing that has brought me uh, some joy in life, as well as clarity, is learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. So it could possibly bring you the same joy if you decide to uh, buckle down and learn it. Thank you for the comment. Next comment comes from April Juanita Boyd Smith, member. Thank you very much for your membership. And they say, I have been studying since November of 2022, knowing what I know already. I think this video has some very wise words of wisdom. It is better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I love the studying. I've learned so, so, so much, not just about the grammar, but also about myself. It brings me joy, self-confidence, and most of all, peacefulness. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. I appreciate your membership, and I appreciate your tenacity as a student. I definitely, um, I definitely put these videos and this material out there for people such as this who are serious about the grammar, who are humble, and who re are really here to learn rather than here to promote some sort of personal agenda. So, thank you. Next comment comes from Daniel, Daniela Ortiz, and they say, what do you think about use quantum grammar, the Latin language? And then I said, what would be the reason? And then they say, the reason could be to try to use the oldest possible language and clean it from current manipulation. And uh, my kuleana to that is the only reason that I use quantum grammar is to communicate with. It's a form of communication, and it's a form of fact communication. Latin is not the oldest possible language. Okay, so that right there is a false premise. The only reason why I would use quantum grammar in Latin 
is if I was communicating with someone who spoke Latin. I didn't create Latin language, so I'm not here to correct it. What I'm here is to do is to teach people quantum grammar and also to stop bureaucratic trespass on a personal level. Those are the main things going on here. So if you, Daniela Ortiz, uh, want to take up a project of creating an entire language, a dead language such as Latin, well, that, that would be up to you. And I commend you for for the idea of doing that project. So if that's something you want to do, you're more than welcome to do it. But I definitely suggest learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar in full, 100%, before you even think about taking on a project of that magnitude. Thank you for the membership and thank you for the comment. Next comment comes from AP-ZQ4FX and they say, thank you, Matthew, for all the knowledge you transmit. You're very kind to give this data. I am taking classes with Ivan Dion in Argentina. It's a curious thing. A lot of Spanish speaking individuals that I contract with or communicate with insist on calling me Matthew, even though I have said multiple times on multiple occasions, please call me Jason. Jason is my first name. I prefer you to call me Jason. But they ignore that and they insist on calling me Matthew for some reason. Maybe it's a Spanish thing. I don't know. But welcome, AP, whoever you are. Uh, if you are studying with Ivandian, then you are in good hands because Ivandian, although I don't really know him that well, he has a very good foundation base. He's very humble, and he's open to learn. And uh, all around, as far as I can tell, trustworthy, honorable, and graceful man. So I think you're in a good space over there. Next comment comes from Sovereign Entity. Ooh, another one of those sovereigns. And they say, thank you. But if nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb, why do you have a verb following a pronoun? Uh, my kuleana to that was, I don't. Um, why would you ask some sort of qu a rhetorical question like that? I mean, if your volition was to be honorable and graceful, with humility, if you spot a mistake in a video, wouldn't you phrase it as, Jason, did you make a mistake here? You have a verb following a pronoun here. And then you would leave a timestamp or a screenshot, and then I, in turn, would say, wow, thank you, sovereign entity, for pointing that out. Yeah, that's a typo. Thanks for catching that. But that's not the case here. The uh, video they're talking about, I watched it. I don't see any verb following a pronoun. I don't see any example of that in that particular video. So I'm not sure what they're talking about. So to me, that's just like a passive, aggressive example of someone trying to low-key, you know, take a dig at me. Which, it's not really a dig because it doesn't really, those things don't affect me. As I said before, I have pretty thick skin, but I just think it's funny that this individual is actually one of the individuals that follows me, but they will be the first to jump on the bandwagon. If they think I've made a mistake, they'll be one of the first people out the gate to point it out or to make some sort of low-key diss. I know that from their history of commenting. So it is what it is, and, uh, you know, I mean, you get all... All kinds of people in here. Next comment comes from Mike Barr, 42, and they say, Quantum grammar is a new term to me. I guess I should look it up or something. <laughs> Feeling squirrely. Might look up quantum grammar later. Or something. Final comment comes from Owen Bruce, 4120, and they say, Difficult to imagine because truth is so overwhelming, other imaginations have been destroyed by the occupiers enforcing toxic fantasies using the most sadistic methods. So we're talking about the video I did where I'm talking about, uh, well, basically the Israeli-Palestinian 
situation. I'll just come right out and say it. I did a one minute video explaining my position on it. So then I said, truth is truth. If one is overwhelmed by truth, then one is most likely suffering cognitive dissonance. And then they say, that may be true. Then again, sober observation is a personal responsibility, unashamedly expressed without fear of criticism. Should one so desire, if one cannot trust one's own perspective to be true, chaos ensues. Another's appraisal is surely tainted by other prejudgment. Be strong in the face of narcissistic types. There are many. If one cannot trust one's own perspective to be true, chaos ensues. That is not true as far as my own personal perspective goes. Uh, I do trust my own perspective. However, I am open to correction. I am open to new ideas. And chaos does not ensue because of it. It's actually very orderly, you know, very regimented. So I, I disagree with that uh, particular statement. And I said, utilizing critical thinking and logic are part of rule one, rule equal judge mechanics. Of course, I'm bringing it around to the grammar because this is a grammar channel. Many people get caught up in presumption, assumption, and personal bias, thus not seeing the scenario as a whole and only choosing to cherry pick their data to suit their particular worldview. Protagonist-centered morality plays into this as well. If you learn correct sentence structure, you will definitely taking a step in the direction of critical logical thinking. See... There's a typo. It should be, you are definitely taking a step in the direction, but I said will there, so I'm going to have to go back and correct that. Apologies, folks. As I said before, with all humility, everybody makes mistakes. I am definitely not immune to it. What I'm trying to explain to this individual is, gently, learn correct sentence structure, and you will gain, you will perhaps get a better cognition of what I'm conveying in these videos. Because this is a correct sentence structure channel. I know people like this come here with their own biases and their own agendas. And they try to impress those agendas upon me in this channel, which fact and fiction don't meet. And that's why they get the kuleana that they get from me. I try to gently prod them to see what the terms and conditions are here. To see that this is indeed a grammar channel and there are terms and conditions. And if you're not here to learn the grammar, then why are you here? Are you here to push an agenda? Are you here to argue? What is it? You're here to mitigate? So Owen says, cherry picking is a confinement of the data stream based on a desire for conclusion. That is an impossibility. Containment is a fiction as expressed by the people in the shed. That is a huge assumption presumption. And that is not what cherry picking is. And I point that out when I say that is not correct. Cherry picking is, quote, the act of pointing to individual cases or data that seem to confirm a particular position while ignoring a significant portion of related and similar cases or data that may contradict that position. I will suggest a second time that you actually commit to learning correct sentence structure because it will gift you an entirely neutral, new neutral perspective on the topic you are commenting upon. And then they say, that's correct, but my point was to emphasize the eternal flux and therefore the futility of conclusions. There's always more dimensions to everything. Again, if this individual would learn the grammar, they would learn how superfluous that statement is. That a conclusion is futile. A con conclusion is not futile. Conclusions bring closure. And most human beings are grateful for such a thing. That's what correct sentence structure brings. But they don't know this because they don't know correct sentence structure. Neutrality is an abstraction. In this case, inferring impartiality. Um, what is it it is inferring is rule one, rule equal. Being able to see the whole scenario. That's what it's inferring. Actually, it's not inferring it. It's the performance of such. To be neutral. Do no harm. That's what it is. 
to look at the scene in its totality. But again, uh, it's not an abstraction. And if they would learn the correct sentence structure, then they would have a better grasp on this. I'm glad to see that they have noted my multiple recommendations to learn correct sentence structure. So hopefully they will actually do that because I always appreciate one more serious student of which there are so very few that possess the intestinal fortitude, the commitment, the gumption, and the willpower to actually learn this. Most people are just dilettantes. They come in with their own agenda, and when they realize how much hard work it actually takes to learn this, they run screaming for the door. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.